On today's show, color, color, color. a Lake Superior fishing guide tries all the tricks, all right. but Captain Dahl found one gadget that became his favorite fish catching machine. Wish or a dream to see what was going on underwater. We'll start right along this edge of the pond. Another too. entrepreneur picks away at Minnesota's invasive lake weeds and learn the J-stroke. And pull your paddle out like so. Today, we get you started paddling canoes the right way. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Up first, every fishing guide wants to find that game changer to help clients catch more fish. And one Lake Superior captain found a new fishing gadget that completely changed the way he catches fish. Even if it didn't have a pro, I broke one up. The loose daily dock dock starts well before sunrise. Right channel, like yeah. where the fish are. Oh. Even so, a good fishing guide never gives away his secrets. <laughs> I'm wired. I've got a mic. This is being recorded. So. <laughs> Captain Peter Dahl makes sure of that. I think the fish are. I think the fish should be closer in. Peter and fellow family members own the hookers. Happy hooker. A hooker two and hooker four. Oh, Happy Hooker is a charter company dedicated to making fishermen happy hookers. <laughs> Every morning, four happy hookers hit Lake Superior. Well, wow, let's fish. A Lake Superior legacy started more than 30 years ago by Peter's dad and his uncle. We've come for the captain. See, it seems his fishing routine color, color, color. Color, color. became anything but routine. Well, I always get a smile the first time we do that. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Peter, he's like one of the best on the lake. Yep, for sure. All right, nice job. I don't feel bad when I catch less fish than him. I guess his voodoo works. Skunks out of the box. But here's the thing. That's my girl. Guests take so many fish pictures. Captain Dahl figured it might be time for a new hobby. It's a water wolf camera. Or at least a new view. Let's see if we can get a fish on it. I've kind of had a, had a wish or a dream to see what was going on underwater. So he tied on a lure and also tied on an underwater camera. And suddenly saw this. The coho was hooked and I was hooked. And I've been running the cameras ever since. Captain Dahl now tries to catch not just fish, but video in a watery world we rarely ever see. What it really surprised me was how much they follow the bait, sometimes without hitting it. Over the years, we've got some really good footage. But the first mate still cares more about the fishing part. I just wish we'd catch a fish on that line, that's all. Yeah. Maybe I can talk him into changing the lure or something. Don't count on it. As long as fish come to the camera for a Great Lakes cameo, this captain will keep clicking videos. Well, I like to think that, that it improves my fishing, but it's hard to, hard to measure that. It's unbelievable uh, uh, watching the fish come up. No doubt pictures and video tell the story. He comes home and edits it, and then, yeah, there's some really cool shots. That's cool, it's really cool.
Coming up, we go down with skin divers as they tackle invasive lake weeds, one tasty handful at a time. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll explain. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers, Alumacraft, Chase on the Lake, and by Kinetico. You know, invasive weeds like milfoil and curly leaf pondweed have become a big topic and a big nuisance in a lot of our lakes. But Travis Frank found a few swimmers who think they might be able to help clear up the problem. Beneath the surface of Minnesota's most popular and populated lake, Underwater plants live a tangled life. In Lake Minnetonka alone, uh, I believe we have over 26 different species of plants. We only have two invasive plants in this lake, and that's the Eurasian water milfoil and curly leaf pondweed. For some lakeshore property owners, Lake Minnetonka's invasive weeds present a growing problem. We have such a beautiful lake. It's a treasure. We've got to take care of it. All right, guys, we're gonna work our way over to the neighborhood. Josh Letty built a small army to fight back against these non-native plants growing where they don't belong. Here, we'll start right along this edge of the pond. This is called Life's Beach Shoreline Services, and we'll start working our way to the right. Sometimes you gotta get in there. Yeah, that's right. They pull weeds by hand. I wanted to work outside. Uh, I wanted to work with friends. I wanted to create, you know, a kind of a team atmosphere. Most of all, he wanted to protect his favorite lake. We are the gatekeeper of Lake Minnetonka, as, as we like to think. We don't want to add any harmful uh, chemicals into the lake. Their work remains chemical free. You need to just go the hard way and start pulling things out of the lake. And the two guys come up, the next guy goes down, and we'll just continue to repeat the process until the weeds are gone. Josh believes killing weeds with chemicals comes at a cost. When you're not removing the plant, you're ruining the water quality. The plant is just dissolving and adding additional phosphorus and other nutrients to the lake that aren't beneficial to the ecosystem. Chemicals are getting stronger and stronger every year just this constant barrage of chemicals being introduced into the water, and it just has to stop. His customers agree. When we first moved out here, we used pellets just one season. First of all, I couldn't tell it made any difference. And second, philosophically, it didn't seem like the right thing to do. And then when we became aware of this service, this seemed much more appealing and effective, actually. This is true restoration at its finest right here. We're very calculated in how we go about our work. Josh's selective management approach you can remove all the invasives gets to the root of the problem. You allow the native plants to reestablish their root systems so that anything that's coming back is one of those native plants. So selective management is the way to go. Removing invasive weeds adds up. We pull about 20 to 25 tons of weeds every single day, sometimes more. So you're able to collect everything at the end, and then we haul it away to a compost site where the weeds are used as compost. There, weeds get new life. Primarily, we're using it to grow hops right now and uh, other wonderful ingredients that may go into beer. At his back channel brewery, Josh turns Lake Minnetonka's muck into gold. It was actually a dream come true, and I'm super excited that it is right here right now. For the protector of clean water. You know, I don't take it for granted. Hard work comes full circle. Yes, hence the name Life's a Beach, that's a fact. It's been a super privilege to call this area my home and to be able to work in the water on a daily basis. Lake lovers here hope that Josh Letty never leaves. And so the 
surprise stroke, you reach out. Still ahead, canoeing takes more than a boat, paddle, and life preserver. We show you how to paddle like a pro. And that'll help you to turn to the right if you're paddling on the right side of the boat. Closed captioning is brought to you by Minnesota Rebat. In this next story, I learned how to properly paddle a canoe. Now, my dad did teach me the basics when I was a little girl, but in this Getting Started segment, I needed to brush up on my technique. Did you know there's a certain technique when it comes to paddling a canoe? Well, I'm here at Midwest Mountaineering to show you how to get started. How's it going? Good. I am ready to learn how to paddle a canoe. You came to the right place. Now I heard you're a canoeist. I am. Okay. What do I need to get started? Well, you got your canoe, right? I've got that. Check. So the next thing you need is a paddle. The first one here is the Bending Branches Loon. This is your entry level paddle made of wood. Got a little rock guard for a little extra protection there. The next one we got here is the North Star Voodoo. It's a bent shaft which gives it 15% more efficiency than a straight shaft paddle. And it also has a carbon fiber blade, which makes it a lighter weight paddle than your standard wood paddle. Well, what about this guy? This is your Werner full carbon fiber racing paddle. Wow, let me see how light this is. Oh my goodness, it's light as a feather. Well, since I'm just a beginner, I think I'm gonna go with the basic. Sounds good. All right, you ready to hit the river? Let's go. Okay. All right, first things first, safety. Make sure yes. you buckle up. I'm buckling in. Grab your paddle. Okay. Ready to go. First stroke you're gonna do is the pry stroke. And so the pry stroke, you reach out and you pull water back. And then when you get to the back part of the boat, you turn the paddle sideways and push out. And that'll help you to turn to the right if you're paddling on the right side of the boat. Oh. To the left if you're on the left side of the boat. Here we go. Oh, looking good. So the next stroke we're gonna do is the C stroke or the sweep stroke. For that one, you reach out and you pull across the water like this. And that'll also do the same exact thing as a pry stroke. It'll turn you to whichever side you're paddling on. Give that a try here. Yep. Yes? Perfect. So the last stroke we're gonna do is the J stroke. For the J stroke, this one's a little bit more complicated. You take your paddle and you reach in the water and then you push your wrist out and pull your paddle out like so. And that will also do the exact same thing as the other strokes. It's just a little bit more efficient stroke. So when you do it full speed, it should look something like this. And you can pull your paddle right out of the water on the back half of your stroke and reach around like that. Okay. There you go. Now, am I bringing this elbow down too far? Um, you actually, when you do the initial turn of the paddle, you don't need to bring your elbow down at all. Oh, so you okay. you don't really, you kind of just flick your wrist out like that. Got and then you it. move your paddle forward. Dude. You're ready for the water. Okay. Let's go. Okay. stroke is my favorite, because the J and the Pry are a little difficult. All right, so there you have it for the three easy steps to getting started paddling a canoe. But most important, just make sure you get outdoors. You ready, Jimmy? Let's go. All right. <laughs> Still ahead, today's Minnesota-bound classic focuses on a pond, a pile of fish, and roughly two million curious guests. Oh, there's a pond. Big pond. Minnesota-bound is brought to you by By the Yard Maintenance-Free Outdoor Furniture, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, Bent Creek Golf Club Eden Prairie, 
and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic kicks off August in Minnesota State Fair style. And we go back about a decade to discover one of the fair's most popular attractions. Only in Minnesota would a cement bowl of water turn into one of the largest attractions at the Minnesota State Fair. This is incredible. I, I work here in the Turkey to go booth and every single year when I just need to relax and calm down, I come take a look at the fish and it's nice. Yes, Minnesota's fish are the stars at the fair and stars are not always easy to catch. To catch these fish, the DNR has top secret lakes where the fish live between fair. What we're doing right now is we're draining the pond down to capture all the fish that we've put in here over the years. Uh, a lot of these fish have been in here back and forth from fair to fair since uh, back in the mid 80s, some of them. So this is gonna be another trip for them. Well, there'll be uh, probably five to six trucks here that'll be filling up with fish. Once the seine encircles the fish, we run it through a couple, three times to get the fish out, drain the pond down entirely, get all the fish out and they'll be taken to the fair and then we'll be sorted. Basically, we're gonna get good and muddy in the water, so um, that's why we got gloves and waders on. Some of the fish we use cradles, the muskies and stuff that are more sensitive, we use cradles on those, so depends on the fish. The bigger the fish we, we usually handle is with specialized equipment. I've seen it several times. It's always kind of fun to watch everybody bring the fish out. So. Here we have a big flathead catfish. Is that going to go camera? Oh, yeah. DNR netting crews gather up a variety of fish species ranging from common to uncommon. We have everything in here from sturgeon to flatheads to gar to panfish. So it's probably 30 to 40 species of fish in here, roughly. Come here, over here. Big one, over here. It's a pond. It's a big pond. It's a big pond. Most of our uh, fish look pretty good. Uh, we got a wide variety. A lot of our capture efforts look like they were successful, so we've got a pretty good looking display. They are releasing a fish right now, and they're putting fish in this large pond. And they're gonna fill it up with a lot of fish. pretty cool. I've uh, been an avid fisherman for years, you know, so it's actually seeing them handle the fish that I don't get to catch is pretty cool. Well, that's pretty fantastic, really. Oh, I see everything in here, something I've never seen before. You got uh, crappie, you got catfish, you got walleye, you got northern, you got musky, a little bit of everything. Well, it gives you hope that there's big fish out there that, you know, all the time that you spend on the water fishing isn't a waste. I remember my first year unloading these fish. They gave me a catfish about that size, and I never took a big net ever again after that. They go to the pond here, all the larger fish, for the most part, go in the pond here, and then we have the inside tanks where we put our a variety of fish species, plus we put a lot of the panfish, the crappies and bluegills, and they seem to do better in the inside tank than out here, although we do have some out here too. As you can see, Minnesotans like fish. Watch them or catch them, it's all the same. Even when some anglers aren't sure what's swimming by. Certainly a rite of passage at the fair. Always has been hopefully always will be. Well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook. 